Rex Humbard talked about Elvis and told him that he was a bell sheep. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that could have been during those days. It could be today. The bell sheep is not necessarily a live or a dead thing. So ex expound on that. What do you think about that? Uh, the bell sheep, as far as I know, this was Old Testament. Um, the, the shepherds in the old time, they had to move their sheep from place to place, the Bedouins, because they, after they ate all the gr grass, they had to move them. They had a bell sheep that they put a bell around his neck, and all they had to do was take that one sheep, and all the other sheep followed him. So that, that's where the term bell sheep came in, because they knew he was a leader. He was going to be right there with the shepherd to do what he wanted him to do and go where he wanted him to go. So that's where that term came from. And uh, I don't think it's a far stretch to see that, that Rex Humbard said that, because there's so many people, even today, this many years after he's passed, that want to be like him and sound like him and dress like him. Uh, he's had a great influence on a lot of generations. Do you believe he's still leading people to Christ today? Well, I do. I believe his gospel music has definitely had an effect. And not just his gospel music, but his personality. His, uh, as we were talking a while ago, his generosity. And so many things that he did just out of the goodness of his heart that was not you know, wasn't for publicity, it wasn't for a pat on the head, he just did it because I've got it and they need it. So I think his, his life and um, certainly his gospel music have influenced a lot of people for the Lord. Amazing. Thank you so much. Dude. You're so yeah, welcome. This, you. this meant, meant a we lot. Really, it you're really so did. Welcome. Something that you know that nobody knows about Elvis. I, I was just telling the story about uh, when um, the plane crashed with the Blackwood brothers in uh, Alabama and uh, R.W. Blackwood and Bill Lyles were both killed in that plane crash. Uh, at that time, Elvis and I never missed an all-night singing at the Ellis Auditorium. They were our idols and we went to church with them and had gotten so close to them. Uh, Bill Lyles' wife was my Sunday school teacher. so. We went to their house a lot of times and cooked and had slumber parties. And uh, uh, the day that we got the news that the plane had crashed and killed both of them, uh, as soon as Elvis got off work, he came to my house. And we were both so upset over that. We walked over to a park close to my house and sat on a park bench and cried and prayed for their family. And just we were just devastated over the loss. Uh, shortly after that, James Blackwood said he didn't know that the quartet would ever sing again as a group. But thankfully, Cecil Blackwood and J.D. Sumner came to the rescue, and they had many, many more years of happy times. But that was a very sad, sad day for us when that happened. We weren't sure we'd ever get over that. They were such good friends. So friends, this street is Lucy, and that is South 3rd Street right there. This, of course, looks like the back of, that looks like a post office is what it looks like to me, but you can see that it's closed down, whatever it is. This house right here, the address is 242. The house that I'm concerned with, and actually it was a duplex or a set of duplexes, and I'm gonna show you in the aerial that I have. There was a set of duplexes right about here. Dixie lived in 224. Other members of her family lived in the one next to it, and then there was another set. It happened right about here in this parking lot right here. So from the best that I can figure out, the one that I have the arrow pointing at is the one that she lived in. And you see the building is still there. It was there then. This is 1958. This photograph was taken. And you can see that there's two duplexes next to each other. Uh, that building was split in half. She said three rooms on each side. And a family, uh, her family members, aunt and uncle, I think she said, lived next door. But remember, Elvis thought that they were rich because of where they were living at. But this is where they would have walked from. And of course, they could have left in multiple ways, walked back behind the house and walked through that parking lot. But I believe they went to their left, which would have put them on 3rd Street, which is the one on the left. On July the 1st, Elvis, after getting off work at Crown, went to Dixie's house and... 
the R.W. Blackwood and Bill Lyles had just passed away in an airplane crash from the Blackwood brothers. And they, he came to the house and they walked down the street to a park that's right down the street, sat on a park bench and cried about them getting killed because he loved the Blackwood brothers. And he knew them personally, went to church with them, and Dixie did too. So we're gonna go down to the park down here I'm going to fly the glory first so we can see the distance that it is, and then I'm going to drive down there and we're going to walk in the park. So just know on July the 1st, Elvis and Dixie walked, and now the direction that they walked, we don't know, but I hope to get Dixie here one day and let her tell me exactly what happened. But until that happens, this is how the story goes. So if you notice in the bottom, there's the two together, and they could have walked through those parking lots and around but somehow they ended up down here at the park. And now we're gonna drive down and take a look at it. I'm gonna do the glory footage at the very end and that's the park right there. So friends, there's where the duplex was. We're gonna turn right on South Third. So we are at the corner of South Third and Lucy. See it right there. So we're gonna to turn to the right and go down here. Next street is Simpson. The next, next street is East Macklemore, which the church that they attended together was on Macklemore. And then the next one, there is no next one, the park is next. So this is the park that they walked through and you see there's an entrance right here. So I speculate that they went through that entrance and went up in there and you see there's park benches. So we're gonna go further and get the name of the park, I see what it is, the Gaston Park, which is the name that she's told me. And I'm gonna come back and park and go across the street so we can walk up in there. So it is Gaston Park right there. So we're gonna film from the back side first. Um, I went, I drove around the block, but I think it's less likely that they would have come through this side but it's possible because the streets really don't go through or do they they could have walked down this street and gone into the park theoretically but in my mind they went the other way and where she lived was that next block down you see that that brick structure down there she lived on the other side of that block all right so here we are this is third that's East Macklemore and this is the entrance to the park she said that they walked into the park they sat on a park bench and where the park bench would be is pure speculation because this is clearly not that age this is newer stuff could have been anywhere in this park, but this is definitely where they came and it's not very big. You see the edge of the park stops down there where that fence is, where the pavilion is. So it was in here somewhere. So they would have sat here and cried about the Blackwoods plane crash. R.W. Blackwood and Bill Lyles. So it happened right here, friends, in this park. And like I say, we don't know exactly where, but we do know that it happened here. As per, per eyewitness testimony from Dixie Locke, who was his girlfriend, and was here. And to get back to her house, you would come out of the park, and walk straight down there past the Gray Ghost, two blocks past that intersection right there. So the intersection and two more blocks and the house would have been right there on the left. Happened right here. So this is from that same historic aerial and if you'll notice, this is the park. The entrance is down on the bottom left. I'm gonna put a red uh, arrow right there. 
And you notice that where the entrance is, the path was straight to the exit or the entrance on the other side. And then they had these little cutoffs. And I would say that the park bench would have probably been in that little triangle on both sides. In fact, on the right-hand side, if you look real close, it looks like a park bench sitting in that triangle. So I would speculate that it would have been in one of those two places. Let's go to Ellis Auditorium on uh, July the 2nd, 1954. Uh, you you attend the funeral at Ellis. We did Ellis. go to the funeral. We went to uh, their funeral. It was the biggest funeral that, I, to my knowledge, had ever been held in Memphis. There were, um, I think, 2,500 people there. Uh, everybody was in the same shape Elvis and I were in. Everybody was crying. You know, you just couldn't believe that their families were all there. They all, most of them had large families. And... Um, it was just the sad time. Some of the singers were there, the statesmen and different groups were there and sang during the concert, I mean, during the service. And uh, uh, our pastor spoke, and uh, it was a very, very tearful day for everybody that knew the Blackwoods. And but the Blackwoods went to your church, they so did. that's they, why your pastor actually officiated that's and right. spoke. They were members of our church, and uh, actually our pastor spoke at Miss Presley's funeral as well. Really? Yes, he did. So, um, and Elvis, even after Elvis got popular, where he couldn't go anywhere without being mobbed by the people, he came to church a couple of times after that, and would go up in the balcony. Um, but it would cause such a commotion with people that he he quit coming to church but he did come back on two or three different occasions that i know of and met with our pastor and talked with him and uh, he had a real sense of uh, his salvation uh, as a young man he was raised in a christian home just as i was so his relationship with the lord was very important to him and uh, as his popularity grew and contracts to sign and people that he was obligated to or felt responsible for. It kind of curtailed a lot of the things that he thought was important to do as a Christian. And uh, it was very hard for him to do that. Um, when his mother died and I went to her funeral, he called me and asked me to come to her funeral and then asked me if I would come out to Graceland the next day, uh, that night. And I said, well, I'll try to. And that night I went out there and uh, uh, I was going to work the next day. So I had on shorts and had my hair rolled up. And, and I just told them at the gate, tell Elvis I came and I'll come back tomorrow. And they said, Uncle Vester was there. And he said, oh, no, you have to go up there now. So uh, he and I sat on the front porch and talked and cried forever. Uh, he was so devastated over his mother's death. I, I wasn't sure that he would ever get over that. But uh, he told me at that time that he, you know, had done things that he knew the Lord wasn't pleased with and all of his obligations he had. And I said, why don't you just quit? You know, to me, it was so simple, just quit. And he said, well, I can't do that now. There's too many people that he was obligated to. And he said he sometimes felt like a, a fly in a spider's web, that it just, there was no way he could walk away. So that was a very sad time for, for us and for me to see him that way. Uh, very sad. So friends, it was an honor to get to meet Dixie Locke Edmonds. And uh, she's married in Edmonds and uh, it was a great interview. We were very interrupted because there was a lot of things going on. And I spoke with her and asked if I could get with her again at a later date in Memphis. And she said I could. So look forward to that in the future. Yep, I tightened up and talked to Elvis' first girlfriend.